Good morning to you all and welcome to worship. If you are visiting us today, we say special words of welcome to you and trust you feel at home here within the Core Fellowship. Just spotted Doug, Major Doug, welcome. Lovely to see you this morning. I'm glad you could make it and Mike as well. Good to see you. After Coffee Fellowship at quarter past one till quarter past two, the final session of our prayer course will be held in the community hall. And as the summer holiday season approaches, both the songsters and the band have their final rehearsals this coming week to which everyone is invited. The songsters is tomorrow at half past seven and the band on Wednesday also at half past seven and you will be very welcome to attend. This coming Tuesday, the Prayer Fellowship will meet here at half past seven and as ever, please make sure that Fiona is kept up to date with all prayer concerns. Next Saturday, that's the 29th of June, the Scotland Fellowship Band will be hosting the world famous Brig House and Rastrick Band at Rutherglen Salvation Army and that commences at 6.30. Tickets priced £5 are available from Ian Kilgour. Looking further ahead, as I announced last week for our young people, the Music and Creative Arts Department of the Salvation Army are bringing the Musical Theatre Day to Scotland this year, and it will be held here at Govan on Saturday the 12th of October, and it's open to young people aged between 7 and 17 years of age who are connected to the Salvation Army. The cost is £25, which includes a T-shirt, and at the moment applications are open to young people from this division before being extended in a few weeks. So please get your applications in quickly, and if you have any questions, if you speak to Gillian. As a praying core, we do continue to uphold people and situations which need our prayerful support at this time. We continue to remember Chris and Paula and the family as they grieve the loss of Chris's dad, and it's nice to have Chris with us this morning. We pray for our friends in care homes, for Major Maisie, who is far from well, for Jesse, Ella, and Major Eileen, and also Audrey in hospital. And we remember those who are undergoing treatment at the moment or who are unable to worship with us each week. This coming week, as the last week of school, is a, a time of new chapters for some of our young people. Some will be moving to a new school year and others leaving school to go into further education. And I would ask that you keep them all in your thoughts and prayers. And we thank God for those who volunteer to support our community work here, for Nikki and for Grace, our new cook, and the people who come through our doors week by week, whether to musical tots, the Thursday feeding programme, or the Open Door Project. It's always good to say words of congratulations, and this morning we congratulate Sarah Gibb, who on the 4th of July will graduate with a Bachelor's of Education degree um, with music, and it's an honours degree, and we do pray for you in your future career. Um, Sarah, it's been lovely to see you just grow and develop and be able to support you during these last four years. And we will be praying and thinking of you on the 4th of July, a really special day. And finally, we thank Sadie for the flowers on our holiness table there that have been placed there in memory of her husband, Matt, and Fiona's dad. And we thank you for allowing us, Sadie, to share in that remembrance. Thank you. And thank you for your attention to these announcements. Good morning. We're going to start straight away with scripture this morning. So if you um, follow um, your, in the Bible, either on your phone or your physical Bible, and we're going to share Psalm 29, which is going to feature throughout our worship in different versions, okay? And um, so this is from the NIV version, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. 
He makes Lebanon leap like, leap, even leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the de desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry her glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Throughout this morning, we're going to look at the majesty of God, what that means within our scripture, what these words within this psalm mean to us this day. And so to help us with that, we're going to um, start with our opening song, song 73 in the Salvation Army songbook, or the words will come on the screen. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him, crown him Lord of all. I invite you to stand as we share this song together.
And here's another translation of Psalm 29 taken from Psalms now. We need to give credit to whom credit is due. God is alive and he deserves our perpetual praises. There is a reason for rejoicing. There is a God to worship and love. The skies and the forests manifest his beauty. The sweep of the ocean represents his power. The gigantic bodies suspended in our universe portray his majesty. The wind and the rain, the lightning and the thunder, the creatures that inhabit the land, the flowers that brighten our lives. All this comes from the hand of God. The glory is not ours. The glory is not ours, but God's. Even the achievements of human hand, mind and machine come through the wisdom and power of the eternal God. The contributions of science, the fields ripe for harvest, the control of water, air and space, the establishment of our great institutions, these also reflect the glory of God. Let us give credit to whom credit is due. Let us rejoice in the God who blesses us. Let us seek his grace to serve him by serving others with the abundance that he bestows upon us. I love that line where the give credit where the credit is due. And that credit is solely to God, isn't it? God having first place in our thinking, in our conversation, in all that we're about, giving God our praise, our glory, because he is our majestic God. I pray that as you've come into worship this morning, you're putting aside some of the things that may be niggling you. You're laying them down because you've come to give credit where credit is due to our almighty God. Our almighty God who loves us. Our almighty God who's interested in all that we are about. Our almighty God. And we're going to just sing a, a couple of choruses. Firstly, my Jesus, my saviour. And then the chorus, majesty. That give credit where credit is due. That give the praise and the glory and the honour to our great God almighty. And then there'll be moments um, after we've sung those two choruses for prayers of thanksgiving. For each of us to give credit where credit is due to our almighty, our omnipotent God. So I do invite you to stand and we're going to sing uh, these choruses together and then let's have those moments of praise and thanksgiving to our Lord. Let's share these together. Thank you. Let's sing that again. My Jesus.
And now we turn to these powerful, beautiful words, majesty. Worship his majesty. And to Jesus be glory, honour and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem raise. That's why we come to worship, to give Jesus the glory, to give him the honour and the praise. We'll sing this through twice and then let there be freedom in prayer, just short sentence prayer, thanking God for who he is, what he has done. Thank you, Bethany. Let's remain standing and let's have those moments of praise and thanksgiving for what God has done for us. Thank you, Lord, for your loving support 
three in your family just when you needed it. Our Father God, I thank you that you hear our prayers, those spoken, those within our hearts, and we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honour. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're going to um, listen to our songsters right now as they bring their contribution to worship. They're singing a new song called How Good of God. I'm looking at Matt, it's like, yeah. Um, so I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Um, it's a great song. Thank you. Some of you felt like doing a bit of a dance during that song. It's excellent. Thank you. And it's so important to be reminded of God's goodness, isn't it? God's goodness, how he's been so good to us. We're going to now hear another version of Psalm 29. And Jerry is going to come and read this for us right now. Psalm 29, uh, taken from the Message Translation. Bravo, God. Bravo. God and all angels shout encore. In awe before the glory, in awe before 
God's vision, <coughs> visible power. Stand at attention. Dress your best to honour him. God thunders across the waters, brilliant, his voice and his face streaming brightness. God across the floodwaters. God thunders tympanic. God thunders symphonic. God's thunder smashes cedars. God topples the northern cedars. The mountain rages skip like spring coats. The high ridges jump like wild goats. God's thunder spits fire. God's thunder the wilderness quakes. He makes the desert of Kadesh shake. God's thunder sets the oak trees dancing. A wild dance, whirling. The pelting rain strips their branches. We fall to our knees. We call out glory. Above the floodwaters is God's throne, from which his power flows, from which he rules the world. God makes his people strong. God gives his people peace. Thank you. We're going to first listen to the Sing Company and then the YP Band. Our youngsters were busy yesterday. They were over at Paisley taking part um, with their YP Band. And then they did a concert last night. I'm sure they had a good time. Anyone got a nod at me? Yeah, I think they're a bit tired. It's like, you know, being special guests and all that. But we'll listen to the Sing Company and then we'll listen to the YP Band. Thank you.
thank you, young people, for both your contributions to our worship. There are important messages that were shared. Um, and I hope we all take those in, the, the fact that we have to live out the life that God has designed for us as the individual. And actually, if we do that well, things will go well. If we do that well, we live out our lives listening to what God has to say. And thank you for that beautiful chorus of wonderful Lord, wonderful God. Um, you're my shield, you're my defender. Believe it or not, you, there are words within there that describe who God is. Okay, that describe who God is. Now, there's a game that um, I've played at different points, normally with nursery rhymes or songs, okay, but I need you, young people, okay, to split into two groups at the front, okay, and um, I want you, you need to have a cup, some adults in this as well, so you need to split into two, identify some adults, and we're going to do this thing where you've got a name, you know, how, the way the Bible describes God, so wonderful, majestic, all those different names that are used to describe God. So you might want to think about who's going to be in your group, okay? Have a think. I'm going to get two microphones, okay? We'll start with one and then I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Then the next guy's got to come in. You have five seconds to think about the next name, okay? So you might want to scan the congregation who's going to be in our groups, okay? I'm looking at you. I know there's only a handful of you. That's why I'm allowing you to have adults. And the younger ones, do you want to be in this? We need two groups at the front, okay? Okay, we need some more, a couple of adults in this group. All right, okay. well, who's in this group? Yeah, I was going to say, Lauren, Alison. Right, have you all got a microphone? There's this microphone, okay. So words or names that describe God, describe Jesus, okay. So, are you all right, boys? Just need to point at the top, okay. Can everyone see this top? Why are you wearing this? Look, diversion. Um, okay, so let me, I'm going to turn this mic on as well. So I'm heard. Okay, right, so we are going to start with this group. Okay, names to describe. No, you can't have help from commissioners. Okay. Not that from your dad. That's, oh, your dad. Uh, no. <laughs> Okay, we'll start with this group and I'll go five, four, three, two, one. No, they got to say one of you in your group got to come up with a name to describe Jesus or how Jesus or God is described in scripture. Yeah? Have we got this? Yeah, we've got this? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Friend. Five, four, three, two, one. Father. Five, four, three, two, one. Comforter. Five, four, three, two, one. Anyone else in this group helping out? Worshipper. Worshipper. Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Counselor. Five, four, three, two, one. Reliable. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Almighty. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Messiah. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, disciple. Five, four, three, two, one. Savior. Oh, five. Although I've done this. Protector. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, a compassionate. Five, four, three, two, one. Alpha, Omega. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know your label. Five, four, three, two, one. Redeemer. Five, four, three, two, one. Wonderful. Five, four, three, two, one. If there's any repeats, you've got to shout them out, okay? Lord. Yep. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh. Loving. Five, four, three, two, one. God. God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Father. 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 Five, four, three, two, one.
Five, four, three, two, one. Omnipotent. We're going to big words now. Five, four, Jehovah. three, two, one. Jehovah. 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 Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. A fortress. Five, four, three, two, one. Rock. Rock. Five, four, three, two, one. Messiah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh uh. Well done, this team. Yes. amazing isn't it though we could have actually carried on there are so many names so many words that we can describe God or we attribute to God to his nature to his character and it's remembering that that God is so big is so mighty I'm just about to launch into a chorus but I won't do it uh, but it's true our God is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing there's nothing that he cannot do and we need to remember that in all that we're about all that we're doing thank you have a sit down anyone want to tell me what's on the meeting plan <laughs> and i've got three microphones going on here um, <laughs> The fourth just here. We're going to sing a beautiful song and it's a song The Splendour of the King. I'm mindful for the band. Um, it's the first time probably playing this through. Do you want to run it through? No. no? Oh, no. Okay. Hopefully it's a song that people know. The Splendour of the King robed in majesty. We will stand to sing this through and I'm guessing there's an introduction. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Please take your seats. At this point in our worship, um, we're going to share in our offering, giving our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Thank you.
Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you that we have this amazing privilege that we can come into your house to worship you and to worship you together here as a core family. And Lord, we praise your amazing name and we praise you for all the amazing things that you have done for us. As part of our worship, we give back to you now with our tithes and our offerings. We place these before you. We ask that you bless our giving and help us use it so that more people come here to praise your amazing name. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you. And thank you, Bethany, as well, for your playing during our offering. Um, we're going to listen to the senior band right now as they bring their message to us.
again, we say thank you to the band for bringing us to the throne of God's play, God's grace. Uh, a beautiful piece of music um, that just intertwines those, those lovely songs of um, many other things I cannot understand. Before we open um, the word, we're going to just sing together this uh, chorus 402 in, in our songbook, 402. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. Let's just, let's just sing this through once. Thank you. Amen. Beautiful words, aren't they? The reason I live is to worship you. Well, those of you who are royalists, um, and probably perhaps there aren't that many in the room, but people chatted to me a fair bit last week about the trooping of the colour. Um, it took place um, last week. It's a normal sort of time of year that that happens. Okay. And um, it's there to celebrate the official birthday of the sovereign. Okay. And for those who have seen it live or on the TV, it rarely is an impressive display of pageantry. So when I lived in London and remembered it was on, because I don't really keep a royal calendar somehow or other, okay, um, I occasionally went down to the mall to see what I could see. Um, I have to tell you, you don't really see that much because there's so many crowds there, it's a little bit crazy. And I look back on the photos that I tried to take and you could actually notice they were a bit different compared to the TV ones. But uh, Rebecca, you're going to pop a couple of some of these images up. So that's, that's my photo. Okay, it's great, isn't it? Okay, it's a good shot. Let's go with someone else's camera, two at least. Okay, yeah, then we got that one. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Oh, look, do you know who that woman in green is? Okay, just there, right, just there. And then the final one. Oh, not a bad image for someone taking photos on her phone, really. But even with those pictures, I'd have been better probably watching it on the TV. Now, for those who watched last week, you'd have seen images like this. <laughs> or like this or like this it was a bit of a mess and I just thanked the Lord that um, I never went to watch it and it was torrential rain like they had to deal with last week 
But I'm guessing, and I only got a glimpse of it last week on, on the news, um, but actually even though the weather would have been rough, it would have been pretty miserable, the crowds still turn out. And the commentary though, would, within the commentary you would always have heard the phrase, His Majesty. His Majesty. It would always would have been present. I don't know what comes to your mind when you think of the word majesty. Your mind might not go to the king at all. It may go to the majesty and the grandeur of creation. And two of our fellowship right now are walking through some stunning creation. Um, Ian and David are doing the West Highland Way with a couple of friends. Um, so I'd imagine if the feet aren't aching, they're admiring God's creation. Or does your mind automatically go to the majesty of God that has been our focus this morning? History says that on March the 23rd, 1743, when the Messiah was first performed in London, the king at that time was present in the audience. And when the majesty of the Lord was proclaimed by the words of the Hallelujah Chorus, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, the king was so deeply moved that he rose to his feet and everyone else followed suit. Because you always stand in the presence of the king. Firstly, to show their respect to the king, but obviously also to worship the sovereign of the universe. And for any of those who've ever been to uh, listen to the Messiah, the tradition of standing still happens at that point. But for each of us, I would imagine when we hear the majesty of God proclaimed in songs such as, such as the Hallelujah Chorus, or the majesty and glory of your name, or the Bampis Nicaea, which is one of my favourites, just so you all know, okay, but it's the majesty and glory of God and like, I don't know, the hairs stand, don't they? And we sense, sense something stirs within us to respond to him. Throughout scripture, the majesty of God is presented to us. His glory and his splendor are there for us to see. The relationship with the children of Israel that they had with God was so sadly probably based a little bit more on that distant relationship. But it was on the fact that God was mighty, it was powerful. And the concept rarely of having an intimate relationship with him it's not really present in the, Old Testament, in the Old Testament. You'll see glimpses of it from time to time. Today things are very different, aren't they? We speak about the fact that our God, our God is a personal God. We can enjoy a relationship with him. We encourage people, don't we? And some of the youngsters use some of these words that God is our friend. He's closer than a brother. He loves us with an everlasting love. He is the one we can bring all of our troubles and our celebrations to. But perhaps at times, in emphasising that closeness, that intimacy with God, we've lost a little bit, lost our sight a little bit on, on His Majesty. We have to hold them in balance, don't we? We have to hold them in balance. Because I believe that actually when we take our eyes off the majesty and the glory and splendour of God, we're in danger of making our God too small. J.L. Packer in his book, Knowing God, says that our lack of the sense of the majesty of God is one key reason why our faith may seem so weak and our worship even flabby. These are his words. We don't have a God who is big enough to solve our problems. When we make God into the size that we are comfortable with, when we emphasize the fact that he is God Almighty and forget that he's also God Almighty, we try to make him into being like us with our limitations. Instead of recognizing the fact that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We've heard three different versions of that psalm this morning, Psalm 29. And verse 2 says this, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendour of holiness. 
Or if you were to use the authorised version, it says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And those who know their band music know full well that there is the piece to the chief musician and those words are sung in the middle and now I've put an earworm in some people's heads. I was talking to someone this week about, about the facts of, of what I was preaching on, Psalm 29, and I described it as the psalm with the verse, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And they immediately said to me, the verse at the front of the hall, at the front of the hall, and I went, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I hadn't connected the dots. The verse, not just at the front of the hall, all the way up. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Words that those of you in the congregation can gaze on each week, can't you? Can gaze on them. They are words that we've heard or listened to or read on numerous occasions. But what is the beauty and the splendour of the Lord? Some scholars would say that a literal translation might be to worship the Lord in the, for the splendour of his holiness. Because the God we serve is a holy God. When Isaiah saw the Lord seated on his throne in the temple, he saw the holiness of God. And his response to seeing the holiness of God is to say, woe is me, I'm ruined. For I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the glory, the Lord Almighty. When Isaiah saw the holiness of God, he knew just how much he didn't match up to God's holiness. But the verses go on if to read them to tell us that God cleansed him and, and forgave him of his wrongdoing. But Isaiah saw the splendour of God's holiness and he had to respond to it. This verse can also be taken as it is written that we must worship the Lord in the splendour of holiness. When we're trying to live holy lives, when we allow God to keep cleansing us and making us into the people he wants us to be, the beauty of holiness, the splendour of holiness will shine out of our lives. Holiness is not an optional extra for Christians. We don't just get saved and that's it. That's not how it actually works. Um, we have to keep allowing God to work in our lives, to keep rubbing off some of those uh, bits that probably need rubbing off, that need changing. We have to allow him to, to help us to take braver steps of faith. Those of you who love Salvation Army history, you will know that what um, hallmarked the early Salvation Army was the fact that it was a holiness movement. The emphasis was on holy living and people saw the lives of those Salvationists, uh, people who had been tra dramatically changed by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within them. There was something different about their lives. And we know that actually the traditional holiness meeting was for the nurturing of the saints back in the day when we had a holiness and a salvation meeting. We know that the emphasis on Sundays probably have changed a little bit. But actually, we still think about God's work in our lives, don't we? We still focus on that as we try and encourage and build up each other, try and build up our young people. We're still trying to think about what is God doing in my life right now. So has the emphasis changed? I don't know. Perhaps it's all just got a bit mixed in, a little bit more. But actually, it doesn't stop people, does it, meeting together in the week, of opening God's word together, of praying together, of sharing together, encouraging each other in the faith. The reason this movement drew, grew so rapidly in the early days, and it did, was because everything was based on the Word of God, it was based on prayer, and it was based on the power of the Holy Spirit, and actually a, probably a fair bit of innovation. But basically the reason it grew is because of Bible study, prayer, passion, filled with the Holy Spirit. Perhaps we need to get back to some of the fundamentals of our faith, because wouldn't it be great to see our balcony full? Wouldn't it be great? 
but actually our lives changed and transformed. If you were to go on these verses in Psalm 29, you will see how the Lord demonstrates um, his majesty in a mighty thunderstorm. Descri by describing the effects of the thunderstorm, David is emphasizing the Lord's power and the Lord's glory. This mighty thunderstorm that begins over the waters of the Mediterranean to the west of Israel and breaks in full fury over the mountains of Lebanon. Storm not being driven by God's anger and judgment, but by his majestic power in the mountains and the forests. Storm affects all of nature. And finally, the scripture says, the storm passes out of sight and sound into the desert. So evident is the presence of God that the earth seems like his temple. And awestruck, awestruck by his majesty, all cry glory. It's hard to imagine really being in a storm like the one described in these verses. I'm sure all of us at some point have been in a storm, haven't we? Probably not quite as fierce. And some of us will love them and we will look out the bedroom window to see the lightning and listen to the thunder and others will hide under the duvet because they're not so sure about it. But the thing is, God being present in these things, it's true, isn't it, that when the storms of life hit us, hits us, God is present. We're not probably always aware that he is when we're right in the middle of those stormy situations. It's only later as we look back and see him at work and that he is with us, bringing us through those times that are difficult. The final two verses in um, that psalm say, The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. In these verses, the Lord shows his majesty in providing for his people. The king who is enthroned forever also gives strength to his people and blesses his people with peace. In those stormy times of our lives, the Lord promises to give us his strength and give us his peace. In those moments when we've got very little left to give, it's then that God comes with his strength. To quote the songwriter, when we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed, here the day is half done. When we've reached the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's forgiving is only begun. These two things that our Father gives us are probably two things at times we need the most, aren't we? Strength to keep going when it's pretty tough, okay, and peace in our lives when it seems very much in turmoil. And we know that Jesus says in John, my peace I give to you. Thing is though, like any gift that someone is trying to give us or wants to give us, we have to receive it. We have to receive it that give and gift and accept it. Today, this majestic, awe-inspiring God says to each of us, my strength and my peace are here for you. Whatever you are going through, just reach out and accept it. Isaiah 40, 31, well-known verse says, those who hope in the Lord Remember, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. It's interesting, at the start of this, we spoke about the majesty and, and, and the glory of God. You know, do we recognise that enough? But even at the end of this psalm, it still becomes very personal, doesn't it? where God says, my strength, my peace, I give you. So even in that psalm, you've got, yeah, God may seem a little bit distant, but actually it still comes back to me, the individual, who am I, and what God wants to give us, what he wants to pour in our lives this day. For these next few moments, we're just going to um, just sing a song together, but there are moments for us to wait upon the Lord to wait upon the Lord 
and see what he's got to say to us. Because he will always have something to say. Sometimes we just don't listen. But he always wants to speak to us, always wants to commune with us. Whoever we are, I invite you just to rest, to put down the, I don't know, perhaps the barriers or stuff in your head that are blocking him from speaking. And we're going to sing the song 601 in our songbook. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed. We'll just take this gently. A beautiful song, a song speaking about transformation. A song that actually, seeing that God is present with us. The chorus speaks about that. As I'll wait, I'll rise like an eagle, rise up like an eagle. But it's in the waiting that God ministers to us. Let's just sing the first verse and chorus, please. Thank you. Let's look at this second verse. Lord, unveil my eyes. It's a big prayer, isn't it? Lord, unveil my eyes. Let me see you face to face. Sometimes we don't want to see, want to do our thing, want to think the way we want to think. But actually, saying God face to face and the knowledge of his love as he lives within each of us. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life, in living every day by the power of your love. These words speak so much. They speak to us who probably have handed our lives over to Jesus, who said, yes, Lord, I'm following you, actually, but Lord, I just, life's just got a bit messy, and I just need you, Lord, to unveil my eyes, to see you again, and to see the truth that you're renewing me, that you're doing a, a work of grace within me. Perhaps for somebody this morning, they, they used to love you. You used to love Jesus, but actually it's all got a little bit wishy-washy. And this morning, Jesus says again, come to me, let me renew you. Let me remind you that I love you. Yes, I'm the great God Almighty. Don't forget that I'm a holy God, but actually I love you. I love you. And he's saying, actually come and follow me and give your life to me. All of us need the love of God surrounding us, bringing close, us close to him as we give our lives to him. And his Holy Spirit leading us on in the power of his love. Let's sing verse 2 in the chorus. We have a place of prayer. We talk about it every week that I do the meeting. I always talk about the fact it's the place where we come to do business with God. It's a place where we come, we step out in faith and we come to do business with God. There's nothing special about it. Some people might think there is. There's nothing special. It's a bench. But it's a place where we've stepped out in faith to say, actually, God, I'm just reaching out to you. 
I'm reaching out to you. Let's sing verse 2 in the chorus. Thank you. Let's go back to verse 2 and let's sing that those words again. Let's stand together as we sing the chorus. I invite you to take your seats. <laughs> Let's go back to the song that we um, used at the, before we went into God's word. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your lovely bless. Let's pray for Colin. Let's pray for Marion as well. I'm sure that there are others here. Perhaps God is speaking to you. God's giving you that nudge and um, is calling you to respond. It's song 402, 927, Bethany.
Let's pray. Our Father God, we come before you this morning and we say thank you that you are present with us, that you do speak to us, that you challenge our hearts, our minds, and you firstly say, I love you. I thank you, Lord, that with all the different things that go on in our lives, the things we celebrate, the things that are actually difficult, you are there. You are present. Father, I pray that for those who may be struggling this morning with the reality that you love them, that actually we're called to be holy people, to live out what that means, to love you and to follow you. I pray, Lord, that you keep speaking. You take away the barriers, you remove the earmuffs, and people are responsive to you and all that you have to say. The power of the fact that you are our God Almighty and yet you love us intimately and you give us strength and give us peace is overwhelming, Lord. But it's the truth. It's the reality. And I pray, Lord, for anybody who's never made that step of faith to follow you, has never encountered you, I pray they have the courage to do that today. I pray, Lord, for others who just... Oh, it's pretty difficult at the moment. I pray that you step in. You bring your healing. You bring your peace. You bring your strength. Father, we pray for Marion. We pray for, for Colin. Both who have stepped out this morning. You know their particular situations, Lord. But we bring them to you, to the throne of grace. And they will know that you are with them. Father, as we go into this week, I pray that we're reminded, Lord, to worship you in the beauty of holiness and we're challenged as to what does that mean for me to live that out in my everyday life. I see his prayers in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to finish um, with a song, 277. I'm still going to use it. The song, Thine is the Kingdom, Lord. Thou art the King of Kings. You must have these moments and you think, should we change the song? But actually, this is proclaiming again who God is. And by doing this, by speaking out these words, we know that God is present, that he is with us. That he is with us. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I invite you to stand as we share this together. Thank you.
Amen. And a final benediction. Day by day, dear Lord, three things I pray. And as we go into this week, I pray that we pray these things. <laughs> to see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, to follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen. Have a good week.